There has been quite a lot going on in the last few weeks, and what with the outrage that is the new Toblerone and Trump's election, I thought it a good time to look over the last few things that have interested me recently. I should note I wrote this video about 5 days ago, but there has been so much to upload to this channel that it's taken a while to get this done. So yeah, hopefully it's not all old news. So YouTube has introduced the new end screen feature and I've been asked by a few subs if I'm going to use it and it does look really nice, however it does not support anything above 16x9 yet, so unfortunately it can't be put to good use here. But yeah, I'm sure I'll start to use it when support arrives, whenever that will be. They do look a lot better and I am so lazy about putting annotations into my end cards, let alone cards for mobile users, so yeah, this looks like the best option. Samsung revealed full details on its new M.2 SSD, the 960 EVO, which looks incredible, and at the same time, affordable, with US prices for the 250GB, 500GB, and 1TB models coming in at $129, $249, and $479 respectively. UK prices haven't been announced yet, but they should be similar, though typical UK pricing will mean that it will definitely be more expensive here. I'm in dire need of upgrading my old 250GB SSD though, so I'm definitely looking at that terabyte model. By the way, everything I talk about here, I'll link to the full details in the description, so if you want to read any more about what I talk about, then just look there. AOC announced a new 200Hz 35-inch monitor. It is sadly 2560 by 1080 and at 35 inches that is something that does worry me as pixel density is so low that most people are not going to find it very usable for anything other than gaming. But that said, that is the exact aim of it. The question is though, how big is the market for people looking for a 21 by 9 monitor purely for gaming? I do like what they've done with the refresh rate though, and I can't deny, I like seeing more 21x9 monitors. I'm just waiting for our first 5k screen now. Quantum Break got its Steam release to good reviews, however it is still plagued with huge performance issues, so it's still impossible to run. A game that can only get 60fps on a GTX 1080 at 1920x1080p is not a well optimised game. So yeah, it's a shame as the actual gameplay was pretty good. Now most of you will obviously have noticed this, but Steam has had a big overhaul in its interface, I've gotta say I really do like it, though I don't spend much time normally browsing the storefront, so that's something I can't really give much of an opinion on, but I like that Valve continues to develop it, as it's the gateway to gaming for 99% of people. Metro 2035 looks like it's on the cards, with the previous two games, and especially their Redux releases, being so fantastic, and I'm so ready for a third instalment. But yeah, no more info here other than the fact that Deep Silver is basically saying that there is no game coming until 2017, so don't get your hopes up that it's coming soon, it's going to be a long wait until 2018. Now, a bit of an effort of a topic to talk about. No Man's Sky. It appears the ridiculously infamous game might be finally getting an update. With basically three months of silence from Hello Games, it's high time something appears, but honestly, I'm kind of hoping the whole game just goes to a corner to die off, as it's wasted enough of people's time already, and it just needs to be ignored, as unless a huge patch comes with massive across-the-board changes, it's not going to make the game good enough. Anyway, that's enough talking about that game. The Division has gotten DirectX 12 support within the public test version as of patch 1.5, but as with all DirectX 12 stuff at the moment, it brings basically no performance benefit. Here's hoping that changes this year. YouTube has also rolled out its HDR support, which is another good step in the right direction. However, I am still waiting for YouTube to increase its paltry bitrate at anything below 4K, and even then it's not amazing. So yeah, please can they just increase the quality of the video streaming on YouTube? 
I have finally set up my Twitter account properly and I will actually use it now. So let's see if we can't put it to good use and get some answers in cases where devs might be blanking individuals, but as a group we might be able to do something. But yeah, I'll start being more active on there now, so be sure to follow me there to keep up to date with everything, and I'll link to all my social media accounts in the description like normal. And yeah, in case you missed things here lately, we've had the release of COD Infinite Warfare, COD 4's Remaster, Dishonored 2, Steep's Beta, and in the upcoming weeks we have some new titles like Watch Dogs 2 to look forward to. Now with the new game releases coming down somewhat, I'll be able to shift back to old games once again with any luck. But yeah, uni is as busy as ever, so it's a matter of cramming in YouTube whenever I have a spare minute, so bear with me getting videos up. Talking of Dishonored 2, keep an eye out for a performance patch that should be coming soon. I'll cover it on this channel as the game runs so exceptionally bad, I feel we need to relook at the performance post-patch in a video. And talking of patches, I'm going to have a Mafia 3 update video after 2K has released the latest patch. And word of warning, it's not a good patch. Ubisoft has also taken flack over its nudity in Watch Dogs 2, which I'm annoyed about. It's an 18 rated game, for god's sake, stop giving in instantly when a few people will have a cry about something. It's unbelievably normal for nudity to be in movies, TV shows, books, any media, apart from, apparently, games, where it's suddenly the worst thing in the world. Meanwhile, I'm ripping the head and arms off demons in Doom. Like, seriously, what the hell? Ubisoft, just stand up for yourself. And a little cool thing I just saw is the discovery of a set of weapons in the COD 4 remaster that didn't make it into the final game. I'll link to the page showing off all the weapons in the description, but it's pretty cool with things like the PP2000 from MW2 and the Blops Galil. Anyway, as always, for anything I talked about here, I'll just link to it in the description. And for anything 21 by 9 be sure to head over to my channel, and I'm sure something of interest will be there. If there's anything you would like me to cover on the channel, comment it down below, and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, the links to my Patreon page are in the description. See you later.